hello everyone welcome to this video in this video we are going to start with the subject of abstract algebra and most importantly before moving on to first of all the group theory we'll be studying about the basics which are required in the study of this group theory right so let's start with the basic so first of all we'll be looking at the properties of integers right so uh, most of this abstract algebra that requires these two things one is the integers another one is the sets right so let's uh, move forward uh, and understand various properties of integers that we'll be using further in the course so first of all we have well ordering principle so what is this principle let's first of all see that every non empty set of positive integers that contains smallest member right so if you take positive integers uh, the set of all positive integers in that case what would be the uh, least number so your set would look something like this so it would be it would contain 0 1 2 3 4 and so on like this so obviously uh, if you are moving on to infinity right so here obviously the smallest member is the zero member so even if you take some smaller portion of it so you would definitely have some member which is present in the left mo most side of this uh, set right and that is called the smallest member so, uh, so this is the well ordering principle next let's uh, let mo uh, let's move on to the rule for divisibility here we say a non zero integer t that is a divisor of an integer s so that means we would say t would divide s if there is an integer u such that you could write s as the product of t and u right for example you say 6 divide 24 right what do what does it mean you have some integer u here what is 6 that is t what is 24 that is s and what is u uh, you you can write uh, this 24 as the product of 6 and 4 so basically you have u as 4 uh, s uh, this t as 6 and s as 24 so we, you would say t is a divisor of uh, an integer s and similarly uh, if you look at this definition an integer s that is a multiple of an integer t so when can you call this to be the multiple if there is an integer u such that s is equal to t u so now you would say this definition is same as the uh, that of previous but the, uh, it is a difference of saying here we were saying that 6 divide 24 now we are saying 24 is a multiple of uh, 6 just as one is the brother of second now you would say second is the brother of first so similarly here we are saying uh, uh, s is a divisor of uh, t is a divisor of s or s is a multiple of t right so this is the meaning here and the notation that we use in order to write this is uh, that of uh, this vertical straight line so we would say t divides s so that means s here would come uh, on the top and uh, t on the bottom with our usual notation right that we have studied in the previous classes and when we are to write that it is not a divisor of s we would just uh, draw a line which crosses this straight line so that uh, represents or denotes that it is not a divisor of s right and what is a prime number prime number that is a positive integer which is obviously greater than 1 and whose only divisors are 1 and itself so they are not divisible by any other number except 1 and uh, the number themselves right so that is a prime number and uh, what does this division algorithm tell us it tell us uh, about the divisib uh, divisibility and uh, it tell us that if you take any two integers a and b in that case when uh, your b has to be positive right in that case we have a unique uh, existence of integers q and r right such that you could write th them to be a is equal to bq plus r where what is this a a is the um, dividend which you are dividing b is the divisor which divides q is the quotient right 
and what is this r this is the remainder so this r has to be lesser than b and obviously it is a positive quantity right so this is the rule here and uh, you can see this example uh, this is true for every member and whenever uh, this uh, these two number they are either divisor of each other or multiple of each other then in that case this remainder has to be equal to zero in uh, because in that case we could write a is equal to b q right and this becomes the definition for divisibility right as i've just told you for an example you could see these two numbers a as 17 b as 5 then uh, we have to write them according to this division algorithm then you could write it in this form a is equal to bq plus r so you are writing 17 is equal to now uh, you could break 17 as 15 plus 2 so it is 5 into 3 plus 2 so here this 3 is q r is 2 and uh, b is obviously uh, 5 right and a is 17 so this is what we are writing here in the second example if you take a as minus 23 and b as 6 then it is a is equal to bq plus r here a is minus 23 so how do you write minus 23 so you will see by what number should i multiply 6 so that if i add or subtract some number which is lesser than this 20 minus 23 i would have the answer so you see if you multiply this 6 by minus 20 uh, minus 4 you would have minus 24 so when you add 1 on to it you will get back minus 23 so this is the division algorithm right now next let's move on to the greatest common divisor what is this greatest common divisor of two integers suppose we are talking about two integers which are a and b so that is the largest among all the common divisors of a and b right so then you will you will call it as greatest common divisor and we denote it by gcd of uh, two numbers a and b we write it like this right so let's see this through an example if you are given two numbers 50 and 20 then what first of all you will see what are all the common divisors of a and b right common divisors of a and b so the common divisors of uh, 50 and 20 they are 2 2 divides both 50 and 20 5 divides both 50 and 20 and 10 divides both 50 and 20 and the largest among all three that is 10 so 10 is the gcd of 50 and 20 here so uh, the next definition is relatively prime integer so when can we say two integers they are relatively prime to each other that means they do not divide each other or uh, so the definition here tell, tell us that whenever we have the GCD of two numbers as equal to one we would say they are relatively prime to each other right for example you can have two numbers here so let me give you some example the example is the GCD of 2 and 13 that is equal to 1 why because they do not have anything in common except one so they are relatively prime to each other 